Good morning Facebook, Saturday morning, how are we? Uh, as you can see, I'm in the office working. I've got training clients um, this weekend. Uh, I do a lot of my training at the weekends because um, I run my property business in the week, uh, which means then I can um, I can do both, uh, but I have to find the time to do both. So I'm in the office this morning waiting for my coffee to be boiled and my uh, scrambled eggs to be cooked. So I thought I'd just do a quick video. Um, I've been asked this a lot in the last few days and I think it's, it seems to be quite a hot topic on the internet at the minute. So I thought I'd just give you my thoughts on this. Now, you know, what should you be paying your deal sourcer? So there's a lot of people in this group I know who are actually um, sourcers, who are new sourcers, who are uh, you know, getting into the profession, learning how to do it and you know, providing an awesome service to people that need the help, but not necessarily clear on what they should be charging for a deal. Um, and there's also a lot of people in this group because this is what this group's really all about is about you know buying and selling deals and trading and building portfolios there's a lot of people in this group who are working with sources and are coming unstuck when it comes to levels of service what to pay what to expect for what they're paying and all those sorts of things so i thought i'd just stick my five pence worth in this morning uh, because i've been asked it about it a couple of times this week so the thing about what you should be paying a sourcer is it's actually quite a fluid response you know there's no real one hard and fast answer to this unfortunately um you know first of all always remember that you get what you pay for yeah in life we know if it's cheap and it's too good to be true might just be that you know i know there's a lot of deals i see come across my desk of people that want to sell me deals and yeah, although I'm not sure because I don't actually buy deals, but they, they, I'm on mailing lists and things like that. So I get them come across and, you know, I see fees that range from £400 for rent to rent um, up to £10,000 and beyond, you know, for assisted sales and things like that. Sometimes we're looking at, you know, effectively finders fees of, you know, in excess of 50 grand For developers, developments, you know, the finders fees can be, you know, top, top -y. So. My thoughts on this, okay, I think what you have to remember is when you're talking or working with a sourcer and you're starting a relationship with that sourcer, what you need to understand is what they're going to do for their money, okay? People don't buy on price. They don't. So if you're a sourcer and you're selling something, people don't buy on price. People buy on the value that you give, okay? People justify with price, okay? So price actually isn't the issue to think about here. And when you're buying deals from sourcers, what you really need to ask yourself is, am I getting a good service? Am I getting good value? And am I getting fair exchange for the money that I'm spending, okay? So when I say fair exchange, that's actually a phrase I get from Rob Moore. Rob Moore uses this a lot. A fair exchange basically means, you know, the work that you're doing and the value that you're offering and, the, you know, the time you're saving, the profits you're offering, etc., etc. Are you asking for fair exchange in terms of the money you're asking for to cover the cost of you doing all that work and for you to make a profit? I think sometimes people forget that sources actually are a business. We're here to make a profit. You know, nobody gets into this business to, to just survive. You know, everybody in business gets into business to make money and to build a profit and I don't think you should ever make excuses for the fact that your business makes money I think you should be proud of that and actually you should want to work with businesses that make a profit because they're going to still be around in you know maybe a hundred years um, to continue delivering that level of service so I think if you're using a source you need to remember those things I also need you guys to remember that if you're working with a source or you're a source you need to remember what your overheads are to run as a business okay if you are compliant and you are set up properly, selling a deal for £400 cannot possibly be sustainable. And the reason for that is because your insurance costs money every month. Let's say you did four deals a month at £400, right? 1600 sorry, my brain went blank then. Saturday morning, no coffee. I'll take it from there. Um, yeah, £1,600 now. Your insurance costs money every single month. Okay, professional indemnity insurance that you have to pay for. You've got annual costs for your data protection for your anti-money laundering, for your property ombudsman, you've got marketing costs to pay for, you've got an office to pay for if you're in an office, you might have a team to pay for where you need to pay a salary and commissions, you've got ad CRMs to pay for, you've got you know business cards and stuff like that to pay for, you might be doing networking, that's you know a membership cost, you've got to pay for that. Listen, £1,600 a month in revenue, selling four deals a month at £400 is not gonna create a sustainable future-proof business for you just isn't okay and when you're buying deals from a sourcer you guys need to remember that they're running a business so what you pay them that three and a half thousand pound fee that's not just profit 
okay they might have worked for two and a half months to get that deal to a point where it's ready to be feed you know they may have worked with in joint venture with somebody where they need to split that fee in half they may need to um you know they've got to pay for all their overheads to run their business out of those costs so the question of what should you be paying your sourcer, whilst there isn't a hard and fast answer to this, I think what you always need to remember is that you need to be considering fair exchange. So someone said to me this morning that they think that my charges of three thousand or a thousand pound per year of a term agreed on a rent to rent deal is is too expensive. My question is compared to what? Now, if I was charging three thousand pounds for a three year term and it was only going to deliver that investor six thousand pound net profit over the term then yeah of course that's expensive compared to the profits that's not fair exchange but if i'm charging three thousand pound for a rent to rent deal that gives them 40 to forty five thousand pounds net profit then you know would you change three would you trade three thousand pound for forty five thousand pounds after all costs of course you would that that's fair exchange so what you need to remember is you need to ask those questions what am i getting for my money Okay, what is the fee actually covering? Am I working with a business that is a compliant business that's got overheads? Do I understand what those overheads are? Am I gonna be working or building a relationship with someone that can deliver that service in an ongoing way? Or is this a fly by night, you know, is punting one or two deals and then it's gonna disappear off the face of the earth? Okay, and am I getting fair exchange? If I'm getting 40,000 pound profit, net profit after all costs, I think a 3,000 pound fee to get into that deal for all the hard work and negotiation that goes into getting that set up in the first place is it absolutely fair exchange. So, sources, my advice to you is do work hard for your money, okay? You are not selling leads, you're selling deals. If you're only selling leads and it's an introduction and there's nothing actually secured, then yeah, you know, you should be charging something, in the, I don't know, 50 pound a lead or something like that, not very much. But if you are doing the work, okay and you're securing it you're negotiating it you're getting it to a point where it makes a profit and you're delivering a service that's consistent and solid that builds portfolios on behalf of other people then you're absolutely entitled to charge fair money for that work if you're buying deals from sources if you're an investor in this group watching this video then please please remember to ask those questions you know what compliance are you doing what you know what marketing are you doing who's involved in the deal are we splitting these fees etc etc What's it going to take for that to become a fair exchange understanding? I feel like I've ranted a little bit. I didn't mean to, but I do feel quite strongly about this. I think it's important that when you're starting your business, you treat it as a business. You're not getting into this for fun. Well, I certainly didn't. You know, and I'm, I'm sure most of the people in this group that I speak to, you're getting into this and you're learning about this stuff because actually what you want to deliver is a solid business that can either replace an income or create an, you know, a legacy for yourselves and create assets at some point in the future. So you know remember fair exchange is king in this particular scenario different strategies obviously sort of demand different levels of fees different work levels demand different levels of fees and different profits demand different levels of fees but make sure when you're feeing up your deal you think about all those things and you ask for fair exchange so i'm going to make my coffee now because my kettle's boiled and i'm hungry and i've got a sore throat so i'm going to uh, disappear have an amazing saturday guys those of you that are working like me you know have fun Enjoy it. Remember, there's seven days a week to build an empire. One day you won't have to work so hard because you're working hard now. And those of you that are taking a day off, well-deserved, I'm sure. Enjoy it. Have fun. Enjoy your families and all that sort of stuff. And I will speak to you maybe tomorrow or Monday. See you guys. Bye.